I really enjoy reading graphic novels and I thought I'd have a quick look at three upcoming titles. Uh, the first of these is Drown Town. Uh, this is coming from Jonathan Cape towards the end of June. It's the first book in a projected series, a uh, story by Robbie Morrison and the artwork is by Jim Murray. It's set in London uh, in the future after environmental catastrophe. Uh, you can see from the end papers here a submerged London landscape. Uh, the artwork throughout is like this, um, all in colour, highly detailed. And uh, Jim Murray has done work for comics like Judge Dredd and Batman, and it has that sort of uh, feel to it. It feels very much like a comic, obviously the, the first book in a projected series. Um, it concerns this guy here, Leo Noire. He is a minder. He's involved with all sorts of dodgy underworld figures. One of these is a woman called Alexandra Bastet. Uh, we don't know much about her past, and neither does she, so she's trying to find out more about that. Um, you can also see on the front here Gina Cassell. She is an aqua career. Uh, this new watery landscape obviously means that people travel in different ways. And she's another one of the characters that we follow. It was all very enjoyable. Um, feels like a comic, um, difficult to take it too seriously, but it does have a nice sense of humour. Be interesting to see where the story goes on that one. Then, from Self Made Hero, we have The Man Who Laughs. Self Made Hero have made a name for themselves actually making graphic novel adaptations of classical sources and stories. Uh, this is a story that comes from Victor Hugo and apparently was the inspiration behind the character of the Joker, as you can see here. It also looks a little bit like Tony Blair. Um, this is Gwynplaine. Uh, this story is set in England after the period of Thomas Cromwell, and Gwynplaine is found, uh, sort of, well, he's abandoned and, and finds a friend in a man called Ursus, who is a philosopher, and uh, also when he meets this man, he's found uh, in the snow, a woman who has died and on her chest is a child. Um, they bring up this child, they call her Dea, she is blind. Um, the story is of course hugely complex but it involves the conflict between the Republic and monarchy, the haves and the haves not, have nots and actually it has this weird timely quality which is at a time of austerity when people are looking around and wondering why some people have so much and other people have so little this book actually deals with those themes and topics. So it felt um, very timely, it felt filled with energy and verve and anger and uh, politics and things like that. The colour artwork throughout is again rather gorgeous, slightly different quality, much harder, not as round as that in Drown Town, almost woodcut like in places which is very fitting I think with the period that it's set in and brilliantly done I think. I haven't read the source material so I don't know how well, the, how well it's been adapted um, but I, I, as a book, reading from start to finish, I thought it was fantastic. Then we move on to The Gigantic Beard That Was Evil, the best title for graphic novel in recent times, and the best graphic novel I've read in recent times as well. Stephen Collins won uh, the Cape Observer Graphic uh, Novel Award, and this is his first book. It's fantastic. It's a modern fable about a man called Dave, who uh, suddenly one day grows a gigantic beard. This is remarkable, not just because it's a gigantic beard and it keeps on growing, but he lives in a place called here, where nobody has a beard. Everybody is clean-shaven, very neat, the whole place is very neat and tidy. He represents danger, chaos, uh, which has come from this place called there, which nobody goes to because it's very, very scary. Um, it's interesting to see whether it works for adults and children, so I read it to my children. We managed to do about half of it in one day and they were desperate to hear what happened in the second half the next day. So that's a great review from a three-year-old and a five-year-old. I'm not sure they got all the subtleties of it, but they really, really enjoyed it, and it's a fantastic book for adults because it is filled with lots of subtleties. The artwork is black and white throughout, but weirdly, because of the amazing number of shades of grey in between, Stephen Collins manages to make a book which is possibly even more beautiful than the, the two that I've mentioned previously. Um, the way that he directs your eye around the page is fantastic, and these amazing outdoor shots where he gets sort of sun flare and things like that. It's just fantastic. I can't recommend this book highly enough. It's just gorgeous, and I can't wait to see what he does next. What I do next, I don't know. Uh, you'll have to wait and see. But thank you for joining me for that quick roundup, and see you again soon. Oh, and that was one take. How about that?